later on we'll see what we can do, but uh, I don't have a strong enough signal to pump that dramatic. Understood. kc 5 AGO clear. All right, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. This is Kilo Charlie 7, Mike Foxtrot. This is the Pacific Seafarers General Traffic Net on the Net Controller. I'm in Tucson, Arizona, just south of Tucson, Arizona, in a little town called Salary. And we're taking general check ins. Anyone anywhere? Oh, welcome. Please go now. Delta, 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 A little mini pile up there, but let me start with Kilo, uh, Kilo Delta Zero Station for your call. Captain, Kilowatt Delta Zero Zulu with Sierra. My name is Boy. I spell Charlie Foster, Delta Hama, and we are. Can I play something, gentlemen? Go to get you off the road. You know, you need to be bypassed that nose at one time. And whenever it kicks in again, you can't bypass it. It's going to sit there and do it, whatever it does. And I tell you, absolutely do not put off road fuel in it. It will mess it up. Can I say something? This is KJ4 CGG. When it goes into regen, it's burning off the particulate filter, which is in the exhaust system. It brings it up to a certain temperature, and it burns all the shut and particulates out of the diesel. It burns it up perfectly. Today we're going to show you the uh, receiver R2322G. This is a receiver that's part of the uh, ANGRC215 uh, shelterized radio installation, which is a tactical military radio system <coughs> that was developed uh, in the 80s and, uh, and it was supposed to be installed in the uh, early 90s as a nuclear survivable uh, uh, HF network mobile network but uh, that was never rolled out it was supposed to be rolled out in Europe which uh, the NATO believed to be the theater for a uh, Russian attack Soviet attack I should say and that obviously ended when the uh, uh, first Cold War was over and as a result the uh, RT215 uh, sorry the GRC215 was uh, uh, surplus and this is a receiver that comes from that. Let's turn it on, see what happens. Well, before I do that, it runs off regular AC, 115 volt, 60 hertz, nothing special. As you can see, plugs right in there. And I have it hooked up to, uh, to a regular military speaker. This is a normal NATO connector. Now this uh, control unit is also used for the RT1512 receiver exciter, which looks exactly the same as this uh, as this setup. And I'll show you a little bit more of that when I show you the inside. But this is just a receiver. If I can get it in, and there you go. Um, this is the key loader. The uh, original uh, uh, radio was capable of frequency hopping with the uh, KGV 10 TSAC, but that has been removed for obvious reasons from this unit. So although the, the sign says it's in there, it's actually not. That was removed before they were surplus. But it can still work in linear mode, a regular mode. This is the uh, ID plate for the controller. It's the C11670G. Uh, like I said, it's the same one that's used for the RT1512 receiver exciter version of this unit. Um, this is a uh, uh, input for a sync unit needed for the frequency hopper. This is a remote control that can be used to remote control this whole installation. Oh, I can't get it off, but you have to take my word for it. Not sh not sure what this here is. Oh, that's the fill uh, the fill input. This is where you use your fill gun to set the hopping sequence. And this is to zero the sequence. If the radio is about to fall into enemy hands, you press this button and the hop sequence is uh, erased. Uh, this goes to the pre-post selector. That's another part of the radio section, but the receiver works perfectly without it. This is the switch for local and remote, and obviously we'll keep it in uh, local for now. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Now when it turns on, I will do a self-test.
still working on it. Radio is microprocessor controlled and it basically checks all the individual modules for proper function. As you see it passed the uh, it passed the test. Radio can do upper sideband as well as lower sideband and uh, it defaults to upper sideband. The frequency coverage is 2 MHz to 30 MHz in 10 Hz steps. The 10 is not displayed, so the, the, the smallest step size that's actually being displayed is 100 Hz. Let's uh, pick a frequency. As you can see, uh, we're now on uh, 20 meters. This is where you would expect the uh, Maritime Mobile Service Net. Kind of quiet today. Propagation is uh, is not great, but maybe we'll pick something up later. I don't think there's any memories installed right now. No, you can program those though. Let's say I want to program uh, 14250. And let's program that in memory number 2. And that's what I have programmed now. I can also program uh, the Maritime Mobile Service Net in position number 1. And that's what we have now. So I can pull up the uh, the other channel. We'll go back to number one. Let's see if we can receive something on, uh, on other bands. I'll have to uh, retune the antenna for that. So for that we'll have to take a short break. Let's try uh, 15 meters. Seem to have some kind of pileup going on here. Can dim this light here. Oops, I turned it off. That wasn't smart. See if there's something going on on the lower bands, 40 meters maybe. And I can show you the uh, lower si sideband feature that is uh, activated by pressing second SP, which stands for sideband, and then we're on uh, lower sideband. So let's see if, uh, if we get something on 40 meters. Alright, let's have a uh, look at the inside. As you can see, the uh, inside is built completely modular. We got the power supply here. The power supply is uh, 110 volt, 50 hertz, nothing special. The uh, reference oscillator is here, it's a 10 megahertz reference oscillator. It's also possible to use an external reference source of 10 megahertz. The unit is auto sensing, so if you uh, plug that in on the front, it will disable this uh, reference oscillator. Now the receiver and the transmit pad is completely separated. As you uh, know this is just a receiver but the chassis is uh, the same as the RT1512 uh, chassis which has two more modules which makes it a receiver exciter. Uh, because of the fact that receiver and transmitter pad are separated you can just take those out and then it becomes a receiver which is what they did for this particular unit. Um, 
audio unit for a receiver, IF unit, RF unit, and an RF switch unit. This is the uh, synthesizer. Uh, three modules for the synthesizer. It's basically a fast uh, DDS synthesizer, which is built uh, with discrete TTL chips. And it had to be a DDS in order to uh, to do the frequency hopping. Only a DDS is fast enough for that. So in the 80s, where this unit was designed, that was uh, pretty unique. He didn't have single chip DDSs yet. As you can see, it's built extremely robust. Uh, this unit is uh, designed to withstand the EMP pulse. That was the whole purpose of the equipment. And uh, as I said, the build is uh, truly unique. This is a uh, very uh, comprehensive filter for the AC to uh, keep that EMP pulse out. Let's have a look at the uh, underside of the radio. Here you see the underside. This is the uh, roofing filter. Seventy five megahertz. And of course, uh, all the modules are connected with, uh, I think it's SMC, SMB, I think it is. Everything is connected with the SMB connectors. Here we got some more filtering. And this is basically the motherboard. The uh, synthesizer resides on its own chassis that plugs in here. And these are the input outputs for the uh, synthesizer. Here is the underside of the filter, AC filter. And here is a distribution board. This is all with flex cables. As I said, built to withstand World War III, literally. Now here you see the uh, bottom with the uh, bottom cover installed. Completely, uh, completely covered. Now as I said, the uh, R2322G 2322G is the same chassis as the RT1512. Looks exactly the same, for the exception of these two modules for the transmitter that have not been installed for the receiver. Now I do have one module, that's the RF exciter, that would go in here. Would have to remove that tape, but for the rest it will fit perfectly. So the only module that I'm missing to turn it into a uh, receiver exciter is the uh, audio sideband exciter unit. And sometimes they're offered for sale on the internet, so this unit is fairly easy to convert into uh, the RT1512 receiver exciter. As an exciter it gives off uh, 100 milliwatts to drive a power amplifier obviously. The control head for the receiver as well as the receiver exciter is identical. So. Right now I have a uh, loudspeaker plugged in, but in that case you would plug in a, uh, 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 I think it's an uh, H250 handset that goes in there. So the control head for both configurations is identical. And this is what the unit looks with the uh, cover installed. Nice and solid, completely sealed. Show you quickly the operation of the memory. Now the radio does have a uh, lithium battery that you can install. You need to remove these four screws. This comes out on flex flex cables, and then there is a battery, lithium battery, that you can plug in there. Right now, that's not in there. So when you turn off the unit, it'll lose the memories. But I did program a few, and as long as the power is there, it will work fine. I'll show you, uh, this is how you recall them. Second, 
it's pretty easy for instance if I want to program number 7 channel 7 uh, memory 7 with uh, let's say 14150 first I press the frequency 141500 second PST 7 and then that's there if I now recall another channel I'm back on here and this is what I just programmed and you can do that for uh, I think it has 32 memories I'm not 100% sure and like I said if you uh, put the lithium battery in there it's, it's one of those larger lithium batteries it almost looks like a normal battery and you put that in there and then it will re uh, retain the memories works very simple propagation is not great today could take you to a higher frequency but you won't hear too much there today In any case, that's the memories. Okay. 7183. And we're now on 40 meters. It's the middle of the day, so signals are weak, but I just wanted to give you an idea. It works too. We're going to upper side bend. And now we're back on uh, 50 meter. I wanted to, to let you listen to the AGC function of this radio. It really works nice. As you can see it stays flat and then it suddenly releases. Much better than what ham radios do. It has the smoothest AGC function. You can hear it, it releases. It doesn't slowly drop off. As you can see the LCD dims after a while. I don't know if it's visible on the video, but if you look very careful, you can see that there is actually a screen in front of the LCD to, pre to protect that from uh, EMP as well. Like I said, it's incredibly professionally built. It's the best technical radio I've ever seen. Alright, that's basically it. The uh, receiver R2322G part of the ANGOC215 radio installation which was designed as a uh, Cold War radio to be deployed in Europe never happened because the first uh, Cold War ended but God knows what kind of nice radios we're gonna have with the second Cold War coming up thank you for watching this video